Hello everyone, Trey here. Today we're going to be working on a classic coding interview question, best time to buy and sell stock. This is a great question to learn and practice because the things you learn here can be applied broadly. You can use these on many other questions. What you're going to do is start with an O of N squared brute force solution and optimize that down to a linear time O of N solution. So let's jump in and take a look at the question. It says, given an array of stock prices, write a function get max profit that finds the largest profit you can earn from buying and selling a stock once. And so our stock prices are represented in an array where the index is the day. So nine is the price on the first day and five is the price on the last day. So if we took this sample input, the max profit we could earn is six. And what this is from is buying at two and selling at eight. And you may be wondering, well, why isn't it seven? You could buy at two and sell at nine, but you can only sell on days after you buy them. So you can't buy at two and then go back in time and sell it at nine. So in this instance, the lowest you can buy and sell later is two and eight. So this also eliminates another quick solution where you say, hey, can I just find the largest and smallest value? Well, no, you have to actually go through the array and find them based on their day. So now, okay, let's think through the algorithm we could use. And immediately the first thing that comes to mind is a brute force solution where you start iterating and then work through the array and check the current value and subtract it from each value after it. So if we start at nine, well, if we buy at nine, we would never sell because all items are smaller. So that's obviously not going to be a great solution. Then we move to two and we check it against each price after it. If we bought at two, sold at four, well, that's a profit of two. So we store that value. Then we buy at two, sell at three. Well, this is lower than four minus two, so we pass that one over. Then we go eight minus two, that's six. That's larger than our previous max, so we store that. And then finally, we do five minus two, that's three. It doesn't beat our six, so we continue on. Then we do four minus three, four minus eight, four minus five. None of those are larger. We do this for each item in the array, and we saw that our eight minus two gave us our max profit. So let's start coding that out. First, we'll just say our max profit initializes to zero. So if for some reason we never found a profit, we return zero, which means you didn't buy and sell. Then we say, let's iterate through the buy days. Start at zero. We go through buy day is less than prices dot length. And we go through each day. And we'll call the buy price, the prices at the index of the buy day. Now we have our nested for loops. And almost any time you see a nested for loop, it means it's gonna be O of N squared. And actually we want to start our sell day at buy day plus one. So you always wanna check it against the days afterwards. And then we iterate through all the prices again. All right, so what would our profit be? The profit is the prices of the sell day, our sell price minus the buy price. Now our max profit, we said, okay, as we iterate through, we just want to store the highest at any time. So that's just going to be the max of the current max profit or the profit at this time. And if we do that for every item, well, this is all the logic we need. So once we finish these two loops, we can just return max profit. Let's see if that runs, and it does. So this is our brute force solution, which we notice is O of N squared because we have the nested for loops where we iterate through every item for each item. So how can we optimize on this? How can we make this uh, better than O of N squared? And the three that we can look at are O of N log N, O of N, and O of log N. So O of N log N is used for sorting. 
well, if we sort, our days get out of order and we can't actually track our profit correctly. So that's pretty much immediately out. Uh, o of login, this is used for binary search. So if you can take your array in half each time and find an answer, and it usually requires things to be pre-sorted. In this case, we know they're not, they're arranged by day. So this we can mark out as well. So then finally, that leaves us O of N, a linear time. And this just means, can we iterate through our, our array once? And let's think, so how are we actually finding this profit? And I've got some graphs for us to look at to maybe visualize this a little better. So we said, okay, we're buying at two and selling at eight. And when you see this visually, we see, okay, well, two is obviously the lowest point, and then eight is the largest point afterwards. So we can kind of bounce around here until we hit this high, and we know it compares to this low. Let's add one more value. So what if we had a nine after the eight? So we go down to two, and then we want to check after it. Well, we go up to four, that's a profit of two. Okay, that's good, that's a max now. Then we hit three, not a max. Then we go up to eight. Okay, this is a new max, eight minus two is six, which we found before. But now we go to nine. Nine minus two is seven, that beats our previous profit. And we know, okay, this is actually better. So what are we comparing? We're comparing the high points with the low point. So we actually don't need to compare to all the values in between, or not at least for each item. We only need to know at any point what's our low and what's the profit if we sold now. And this is why we call it a greedy approach. We're not doing this in double for loops. We're not trying to remember every item. We're only finding the best solution at any given time. And to drive this point home, let's add a one after the two. So you start at nine, go down to two, there's no profit, so our min price now is set to two, and our max profit is still zero. Now we go to two, well we would still not sell, but our min price has now decreased to one. And we go up to four, well four minus one is three, that's also our new max profit, but we haven't hit a new min price. We go down to three, no new max profit, eight new max profit, nine new max profit, five. So we iterate through all the items and we only need to store these two things. So let's rewrite our solution to handle that logic. We said we want to track the min. We want to track the min profit, which we always, or sorry, the min price which is, we'll initialize the first price. And we're also going to assume that this array is a valid input. There's going to be at least two days, so you can have the option to buy and sell, but we're not going to check. We're going to save time there and just really focus on the logic. And this time we're going to say for price of prices. So we're not doing this nested, we're not comparing indexes. We only know at any given time, we're tracking two items. And now our max profit is once again going to be the math.max of the current max profit, or it's going to be the current price minus the min price. So this is the price on the day. This is the minimum price we'd found before. Our profit is price minus min price. And then finally, we say the min price is equal to the minimum of the current price or the previous minimum price. So this is the greedy approach. We're only tracking these two things and doing the best we can on any given day. Once we iterate through this loop, we'll return our max profit and that should once again give us our solution. Prices of the zero, fix our bug, and there we go. We got the same solution as our brute force, but only iterated through our array one time. And that's it guys. I hope you had a great lesson. I hope you learned a lot. If you find these helpful, hit the like button below. Let me know that these are beneficial and I'll keep making them. Thanks for joining and I'll see you in the next lesson.